Welcome to Catholic Mom Mindset, a daily show where you learn to walk closely with the Holy Spirit so you can live the life God is calling you to. I'm your host, Sterling Jaquith. Let us begin. Tough love today, you guys. What do you need to take responsibility for in your life? I think so many of us are just living lives that are reactive. Things are just happening around us and we're just showing up to the things that happen in front of our face. And we're just dealing with them from the moment that we wake up. We're just reacting to all of the things around us. And I want to invite you to stop doing that. I want to invite you to live life on purpose with intentionality. And that doesn't mean you have to hyper plan everything. It doesn't mean that you have to be so rigid. It doesn't mean you have to know how you're going to spend all of your time. But there should be some non-negotiables in your day. And you should always be looking for skills to cultivate. So the skill of time management, the skill of emotional regulation, the skill of communication, those are ones that most people aren't Googling. And as a mom, communication is incredibly important because you're communicating to your husband and your kids. Managing your time is really important. Managing your emotions and understanding why sometimes you don't. And being a scientist of that, right? All of us lose it on the kids. All of us have moments of that where we just yell at them, okay? But when you get to the end of the day or the next day, I want you to go backwards and hack how that happened. Oh, I didn't, I didn't eat anything. I didn't drink enough water. I, you know what? I was wearing jeans that were a little too tight and it was making me feel self-conscious and uncomfortable. And that kind of just contributed to my overall feeling frustrated. And then I'm watching the kids do X, Y, and Z. And that drives me bananas. Okay. But all of those are room for improvement items. Okay. How are we managing your sleep? How are we getting you more water? How can we get more movement in your day? And I wouldn't do all of these things at once, but just slowly start living your life on purpose. I have an elliptical machine and recently it's, so it's in our sunroom, which doesn't really, it isn't really temperature controlled. It's kind of like a porch that's closed in. And so I wasn't using it and I was kind of pouting about it because I was like, it's muddy outside. And we have a, a very large circular driveway that goes around our house. But my husband put really giant gravel in it. So I don't love to walk on it. It's just, it's just, re- it's just really giant gravel. Um, and then I don't love walking in the grass because it's muddy. Listen to how pouty I am. But I just noticed that I wasn't as happy. And I realized I wasn't exercising as much. I wasn't getting in that kind of like cardio or those steps. And then I was like, well, I just wish my husband would insulate the sunroom so it was warmer there. And when this occurred to me, he was gone. And I was like, buck up, kid. Go get that elliptical machine, which has wheels on the front of it, and wheel it somewhere in the house so you can use it. And I ended up putting it in my room, and I had my daughter help me. And it was a little tricky getting it around the corners and fitting it into the room, but we did it, which was awesome. It felt amazing to do that. And, and she was so proud of us for doing it because I think she looked at me like, you're not going to be able to do this without dad. And I loved showing her that I could. And I don't like the way it looks in my bedroom. I ended up putting, I wanted to put it in my office, but the way the hallway works, I couldn't get it around one of the corners. So I ended up putting it in my bedroom and I don't like the way that it looks. But I just had this moment where I was like, yeah, who cares? So the elliptical machine is in your bedroom over the winter. You're a lot happier when you exercise a little bit every day. And this is what I mean about taking responsibility of our lives and not living in victim land. And then recently, I I just, emotional abuse kept coming up in coaching with my clients, um, in my Slack groups, and in my life. And I realized I didn't know what that meant. I had a vague sense of what emotional abuse meant, but I didn't really know what the definition was how to identify it and some very quick go-to strategies about what to do about it. I definitely know how to manage your mind and how you can talk to yourself to regulate how you show up. But people kept saying, but like, what if it's emotional abuse? And so I thought, yeah, I should just go learn about that. And so I went to the internet and I ordered a workbook and an actual book and bookmarked some YouTube videos. And I'm going to go learn 
about what is emotional abuse, how to identify it, how to set boundaries so that I can teach it. And that's me taking responsibility for learning something I don't know. And it doesn't have to be a big deal. Now, I don't think all of you should necessarily go and buy books and read books about everything. It's my job to read books and to teach people things. But you can go read a couple articles or watch some YouTube videos and at least get a basic knowledge of something to know if that's where you need to spend your time. I've also been suddenly reading more things about strong-willed children. If you've been following me, I've always said, well, I don't really have a strong-willed child. And I hadn't. The three girls aren't. Uh, but my five-year-old, I think, is. And I'm still on the edge of that. I can't tell if it's just boy energy, but he's he's very willful. And our regular parenting tricks do not work on him. So instead of being frustrated about that and throwing my hands up in the air, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm just going to go learn about that. What is a strong-willed child? What is different about that? Is it a real thing, right? Sometimes my brain is like, is this a real thing? Or is this just one of those labels that we've created and it may or may not be real? Or maybe we're overly sensitive about it. I like to go find out for myself. And so what do you need to do? Where do you need to take responsibility in your life? Pick one thing, not 10 things, one thing. Go learn about the skill you need to acquire and practice the skill. Stand up and take ownership of that. And you will feel better. It feels so crummy to live in victimhood land. It feels really good to do things, even if it's challenging. Thank you so much for listening and have a blessed day. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Catholic Mom Mindset. To learn more about growing closer to the Holy Spirit, check out our free resources at madeforgreatness.co. Thank you so much for listening and have a blessed day.